Hi, this is Gary Davis, and then in this tip and trick, I'd like to show you a feature in 3ds Max 2017 that isn't really getting a lot of attention uh, in the marketing materials. And it's an old feature that is actually got a lot of uh, work done under the hood, so it's not really necessarily a new feature, but something that's been improved for performance. And what that is, namely, is that the scanline rendering engine, uh, which you can see here, it's been in Max since version one. The scanline renderer is actually now much more multi-threaded than it used to be in the past. Um, what I've got set up here is a turbo squid scene and it's you know I got some simple animation in here uh, this is set up with a bunch of omni lights around the side of the room that you can see here kind of mimicking these um, you know portals if you want and then there's one single spotlight that's a volumetric light actually coming down so as you know volumetric lights can uh, add quite a bit of render time to something like any to any rendering engine so I very specifically and intentionally have a volumetric light in this scene so once again, um, you know, I'm not doing anything new here. If I look at the material editor, um, all using um, standard old school shaders. So these are going to be compatible with game engines, uh, something to consider there. So, you know, just the old school standard scene, standard shaders, old school lights, shadow maps, and so on. So what I'm going to do now is uh, bring up the Windows Task Manager and leave that up. You can see that right now there's not a lot going on. I am recording in the background, so there's a little bit of activity. But when I go ahead and bring up the render dialog, what I'm going to do is say, um, let's do a 720p render, which you can barely see underneath right there. And I'm going to leave this Task Manager up. So when I hit Render, what's happening right now is it's loading all the texture maps. It's preparing all the shadow maps. And it's, you know a lot of stuff is getting pushed into RAM. So you can see the Task Manager down there is at about 36 37%. But once the renderer actually kicks off, you're going to see that the scanline renderer in the 27 release of 3ds Max actually has quite a bit more multi-threading. Now, it might not be as efficient as something like Metal Ray or V-Ray, but it's worth noting that the scanline renderer is actually the second most used renderer or rendering engine in 3ds Max, which a lot of people you know, might not realize. So now when we see the renderer fire off, you can see that our CPU usage goes way up. Um, again, not quite to 100, but it's much more multi-threaded. And in this case, we get a really nice scene with volumetric lighting, ray trace reflections, you know, again, using the old school scanline uh, renderer. And in this case, that took 41 seconds. So if you want to look past, uh, you know, other rendering solutions out there and look back to the scanline renderer, this is going to be really useful for a lot of people in a lot of different industries, including um, broadcast TV or motion graphics work. When you really have to do fast turnaround, you might not have a render farm. And 40 seconds for an HD frame with ray traced reflections and volumetric light is really something to consider. Uh, lastly, I would also, you know, T talk to the game artist out there who's doing a lot of uh, render to texture or baking uh, texture maps for things like game engines. So the scanline renderer, you know, again, not a new feature in 2017. It's been there since version one, but it has a lot of new uh, optimizations under the hood for multi-threading. So it's worth definitely checking out the scanline renderer.